one of the rising stars of British comedy, it's Mr. John Richardson! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'll give you a couple of seconds to readjust, because I recognise I come as quite the anti-climax. <laughs> Get on in and out. Oh, yeah! Oh, dear. Seriously, though. Um, it's important how you talk, because people decide very quickly whether they can be bothered to listen to you or not. And uh, the, the best tip I ever got was from a teacher, because it's important that teachers are heard, because they impart, you know, serious facts. My teacher, the best teacher I've heard was my technology teacher, to make us listen at school, what he used to do, every now and again, he'd put a little speech impediment on, right? Not a big one, just sometimes at the end of sentences, he'd make a little noise. Uh, so we'd be sat around and he'd go, uh, don't forget, lads, if you are going to do a dovetail joint, just reinforce it with some PVA glue. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. That is poetry when you're 15. <laughs> is one lesson you are never missing. And of course, it's genius for a teacher, because we were listening out for it, accidentally learning stuff. <laughs> and I think he knew, because as a reward, he'd always do a nice big one at Christmas. Like, uh... <laughs> Don't forget, lads, that will be on the exam. School was the last time I was really happy with myself, I think. Because um, school, you don't know who you are, you're still learning. You go to university to find out who you are. And I went to university and found out um, I'm a prick. <laughs> yeah, it's a real blow to me. Uh, um, I have compulsions about cleanliness, which are not kept by most students, you know. You go to university to find out you're cool, you try drugs, you have sex. I found out I like stuff tidy and in its place. <laughs> Which is devastating when your flatmates are bursting into your room going, Well, I've got a spoon up my arse, let's do some E and go out. <laughs> I was more like, Well, why don't we wash that spoon? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> then we'll pop it back in the spoon compartment of the cutlery drawer. <laughs> I don't know if you saw my note. Uh... <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, I was a note writer. Um, and you go to write a note, you think, well, I don't want to come across as a dick, so... Uh, hey, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's the It'd be really cool if we could wash our own things up. Yeah. <laughs> Pop that on the fridge and wait for the shit in my pillowcase. <laughs> I'm much happier on my own. I'm very angry when I leave. When I go out now, I'm a very angry person. If I see things done how I, you know, don't think they should be... Like, when I drive, generally, I don't assert my anger, because I'm aware I've got a punchable enough face as it is without provoking the matter. But it's only when I drive I become Mr. Confident, because my brain goes, ooh, John, I've had a quick scan round, and uh, you're wrapped in metal now. <laughs> That's the definition of Robocop, isn't it? <laughs> so when I'm in my car, I love my horn. I really love to blast the horn. And there's a lot of cliches about small men who blast their horn. I just do it to get it out of my system. If someone cuts me up, I want them to know they've done it. So I'll just, screw you, society. <laughs> the problem is I drive a Ford Fiesta. That's not the most masculine horn on the market, that one. What's supposed to come out of screw you society tends to come out as stop it! <laughs> but, uh, it ruins... Uh, I've been single for a long time now because you, be, you need to have a certain confidence, I think, to get in a relationship. You need to be able to go up to some... My friends love it. My friends that are single love being able to go up to strangers in a bar and know that they know nothing about them. I hate that. I'd rather... If I see someone I like, I'd rather just go up to them, give them a laminated list of everything I'm good and shit at... <laughs> There you go, that's the full package. You see what you think? I'll just be over here crying into a drink. <laughs> but my friends love the, oh, yeah, what do I do? I'm a ninja. Um, probably not a ninja, then they wouldn't have seen you. Uh, otherwise, pretty crap at your job. Uh, but then they go back, and the sex thing, it's confidence in sex now is crucial. They love the fact that you can go back with someone and go, <laughs> you'll probably never have had it like this before. <laughs> and, you know, I can do that, but it's more of a, <laughs> you'll probably never have had it like this before. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been with what they call a crier. Because <laughs> it's a very confident beast, you know. You're supposed to enjoy the fact that you can put stuff places and tickle stuff and squeeze bits. And what they tell me they do, my friends, is that now part of sex is talking. You talk to each other during sex. <laughs> Not in my world. <laughs> I'm a traditionalist. In, out, whimper, apologise, bail. <laughs> that is the game as far as I understand it. No chit-chat, there's barely time, all right? 
But what it is, the reason I don't talk is just self-awareness. You know, I've heard my voice. I know what I sound like. And this is not a voice that will accentuate a sexual experience. <laughs> I mean, for a lady, the last thing you want to hear when you try to enjoy yourself is, oh, I'm having a smashing time. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but... <laughs> It's the, the, the tone of my voice is horrible, isn't it? You don't want to hear that. And my accent, if I try and compliment a lady, it sounds like I'm talking about livestock. <laughs> uh, it's unfortunate, but I can't... Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> it sounds like I've just come off Emmerdale. It's horrible. <laughs> I know the main reason I don't talk is I'm not much of a conversationalist. I wouldn't know what to say. So I've asked friends, I said, look, if this ever happens, what do I say to someone while sex is happening? And they said, look, at advanced level, there's a lot of who's your daddies and wherefores. Um, <laughs> but as a beginner, if you're not that confident, while it's going on, if it's going all right, you just go, ooh, you like that, don't you? <laughs> not as camp as I do, it, obviously. <laughs> you said like a man would say, like, ooh, you like that, don't you? <laughs> I can do the voice if required. It's a voice you must do throughout, by the way, not just for that sentence, because that frightens him. <laughs> oh, you have to have a comeback. <laughs> From the beginning. Um, now, I quite like that one. It seems sensible to me, because it's not a statement, is it? It's not you talking to them, it's you asking a question, so they have to respond. So you go, oh, you like that, don't you? And they go, oh, yeah, that's smashing. <laughs> Now, you say that, and this, now, uh, the fear I have is something I learned from comedy, and it, it, this goes for anyone who addresses an audience, right? Because brains play tricks on you. And um, what you do, if you, when you're a comic and you start out, you're not very good, right? And when something's not going very well, what your brain says is, <laughs> you should just reference the tension and it'll go away, right? So you go, <laughs> this isn't going very well, is it? It doesn't help. You just give the audience a window to go, no, it's not. Piss off. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, that applies during sex. And saying something as stupid as, oh, you like that, don't you? Just gives her a chance to go, no, oh, it's actually quite unpleasant. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, this is my idea, John. I'm going to have to stop you there. <laughs> I am feeling quite bilious now. I don't know how to describe it to you. You know when you stroke a dog the wrong way? That's what every inch of my skin feels like at the moment. <laughs> Soz. Um, that's all the time I've got. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Take care. Good night. Fantastic. Mr. John Richardson, ladies and gentlemen! We love John Richardson! <laughs> oh, look.